The Drop with Frank and Brian is officially brought to you by Switch Suspension. Switch Suspension specializes in all vehicle chassis components. Lift kits, lowering kits, air ride suspension, wheels, tires, steering, and brake upgrades. They use all the best products from the best brands. And these guys are truck guys. You roll into their parking lot at the shop and they all drive custom vehicles. So they use their products that they sell on their own vehicles. So if you guys are looking for anything for your vehicles, whether you're just starting out or you just need some replacement parts or whatever, give them a call or visit their website, switchsuspension.com. What's up? Nothing. What's up with you? Hold on. Actually, there is the one. What is this? Remind me tomorrow. I never update this thing. This laptop is 13 years old. Yeah, I have a, I have that same year model make laptop sitting up in my closet. <laughs> this one, that one's retired. This one's not retired yet. <laughs> I've retired two since then. Oh, really? Today? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, here we are recording, 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 recording in focus. Well, of course, it's in focus. It's the it's the pocket. It's always in focus. It depends on what's in front of it. That's true. I'm pretty far away. So everything's in focus. Yeah. Yeah. I got my measurements down. Everything's good. I hope I did, too. I can't put my tape on the floor. I could put yeah. my tape on the floor on those little on that little mat. Oh, on I the guess. Mat? Yeah. yeah. Just the little back ones. Oh, did I miss that up? Okay. Anyway. All right. What's going on, man? Uh, nothing. Well, lots of stuff. Lots got, of I got, stuff. I got notes. I, I I don't, but I got ex I got exciting news. Well, let's get it out of the way. Your boy got a tundra. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, patience pays off. Oh my gosh! So I I'll tell the story of okay. the tundra. Um, yeah, it was. That's what it was. It was patience because yeah. um, our listeners uh, know a few months ago. I started this talk about getting. We don't. A we don't have listeners. We have friends. We have friends. We have friends. our friends. This is not a radio show. We are. What do they do though? They listen to us, but they're our friends. <laughs> listeners would be like, it's like if we had a morning radio show. Okay. Like we know most of these people, so I feel weird calling like them listeners. Our dear friends. Our dear who who friends who listen take who take <laughs> an hour out of their week, some weeks to sit down. And just to hear what we have to say. Yeah. We could right. call them watchers. Watchers. That's like, even weirder. So, I know. That's what I'm saying, right? Just, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tell the story. Anyway, the people who do something know that a few months ago, uh, I started this like thing about getting a Tundra. And uh, I almost made a grave mistake many months ago that um, that I talked myself out of, which was we it was back in January and uh, we went to the local dealership here. Looked at a Tundra. It was beautiful. It was nice. It was everything we wanted. Uh, but it was just ridiculously expensive. There are They are they are ridiculously expensive. Yeah. That's, but this one was extra ridiculously yeah. expensive. And the rate was really bad. The rate was north of like 7% at the time. Mm. And it, it was just an all-around bad deal. So we didn't do that. Um, and then so I go down to Ontario, California to go to my chiropractic appointments. Because also people who tune in know that I have a bad back. So anyway, so I go down there and I go down to my chiropractor in Ontario. And since I was going down there once a week, I was like, I'm just going to go check out dealerships. So drove around to all the different dealerships. I, I went back to a dealership that we bought our Camry from called Crown Toyota. Mm -hmm. And it's in Ontario. And they're the best. Like uh, you and I went to one in Riverside. Uh, they were kind of ridiculous. Uh, Toyota of San Bernardino was ridiculous. Anyway, these guys were pretty on it. So I talked to this dude, told him what I wanted. He's all, well, I don't have that, you know, but let me find it. And then, you know, whatever. So like, so that was in, I would say that was in February because that was like when we were going to LST and stuff like that. Yeah. So that was in February. So he would like text me all the time. Hey, I got this one. So our qualifications was it had to be a white Tundra, um, SR5, and then anything beyond that, it, we'll, we'll do whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's what we wanted. And then so he would hit me back and he's like, hey, I got a, a Lunar Rock uh, Tundra. I was like, no. And he's like, oh, it's a nice color. I was like, it's not white. 
And then he would come back with like, I got a silver one. So this is like months of going back and forth. So finally he texts me as before we left for cruise the pines, which we'll get to in a minute. And uh, he's, I got one. He's already, he can get one. Cause I guess dealerships can do like a, um, they'll trade within mm -hmm. with other dealerships and stuff. So he's, I got one. And so he hit me up on that like Thursday and I was like, well, I'm leaving. So I'll see you Monday when I get back. So anyway, so I get back, he acquired the truck. It was a good price. Uh, and I said it before in the beginning of this conversation, I'll be pretty transparent with everything, and I mm -hmm. will, but I will withheld some information. Oh, yeah. Um, but I can tell you that um, the the truck was 55, yeah. 55 out the door. So that was, a, a relatively a relatively speaking, a good price for one of these trucks. Yeah. And it was actually 57 or 56 or something like that, but they had a discount on Tundras for like $3,000 off, which actually I thought about it because what it actually is, it's a uh, SR5 TRD off-road, mm -hmm. which we, you and I have discussed, you know, and you were like, well, you know, that's not really a thing. But basically, we got the TRD package for free. Yeah. So they knocked off the $3,000, and then we got basically got that package for free. The interest rates were killer right yeah. now. Like, they are super low right now. So, yeah, everything worked out. And Heck we yeah. like, it was one of those things where we just like – I wasn't really, it, it always happens that way. Like you really don't plan on doing something like that. And then we rock down there and all of a sudden everything just fits together. And then, yeah, all of a sudden well, I think we that's the better way to do it. Because if you go like the first time you went, you were like, you were just excited. You were just yeah. like, this, like, we can do this. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not that you can't, it's you can, but it's just like, you got to push that excitement out of the way and come back to reality and be like, yeah. okay, let's, let's do get the best deal for us. Like regardless that everything's expensive da, 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 but like if you're just patient like it will happen yeah and that's what we found out and it was just going to dealerships checking out prices um you know knowing knowing what these trucks can cost or what they should cost you know so you when you go like the one in the uh, toyota san Bernardino, the cheapest truck they had there was like sixty eight thousand dollars yeah well and it has, and and finding the right dealership because i went through this with the maverick too that's not going to like pressure you into warranties or gap mm -hmm. or, or whatever. Like, you know, yeah, those things have their place, you know what I mean? But like mm -hmm. dealers, well, they're going to take advantage of you regardless. And that's, what's interesting about this one in particular. It was none of that. They were like, yeah, that's so this good. is the price. This is the financing options. Would you like to do it? Yeah. Cause that's, and like, then that's what people don't get is you're not, don't, you're not don't negotiate the payment right right negotiate right, right, right. the total price of the truck and yeah exactly. because they can adjust the price of the truck to make money for the dealer like say the truck's 55 and they're like well we'll throw in gap for free they're not throwing mm -hmm. in gap for free they're knocking a thousand bucks off the truck and right. they're they're pocketing a thousand dollars for the gap or mm -hmm. warranty or or whatever right so like you got to negotiate the price of the truck and which was funny because you were preparing me for all that. Yeah. And I was prepared. Like once we, the, the, the salesman, I realized, cause like the last time we bought a car was we bought, like I said earlier, we bought it from this dealership. We bought our Camry in 2013. So it'd yeah. been a very long time. So, you know, I was like, you know, I, I, you, you gave me all this advice and I'm like getting myself mentally prepared. And I go in there, the salesman really doesn't have anything to do with anything. That fool just went and got the truck basically. Yeah. <laughs> it's so Which, funny that they, do, they don't, they, they're literally just there to like stand in the parking lot and get you in <laughs> yeah, basically. And then, so we go talk to the, the finance dude. And, uh, I, that's when I was ready. I was like, you know, they, they show you the, the long sheet or whatever, yeah. which is digital or whatever. But so I'm like ready and I'm like looking at the sheet and I'm like, Oh, it's got nothing on it. You're like, damn it. <laughs> and the guy was just like, he, he asked us about a warranty one time yeah. and it was like this. He's all, well, you know, you got this stock warranty with a truck and it covers this and this, and this, but he's like, eh, if you want to do this, we have this extended warranty thing. And some people get it. Some people don't get it. If you want it, it's available. And I was like, no, I don't want it. He's like, yeah, whatever, man. <laughs> That's I was. It's funny because I've been looking into warrantees for the Maverick because the Maverick's getting it's going to hit 25,000 miles. Uh -huh. And um, it's got a it's three or th 36,000. Right. Mm -hmm. But the actual like powertrain is I think it's like five years, 80,000 or something. And then the yeah. hybrid powertrain is like a hundred thousand miles. Yeah. And then the, like everything has a different warranty on the vehicle. So like, then I went and looked at the extended warranties and I was like, why would I buy an extended warranty when almost everything is covered? And the extended warranty that I want is like 1500 bucks. Cause people might not know this. 
you can buy an extended warranty through the, the Ford or Toyota or whatever up until the point of your factory warranty. Oh, so okay. like, yeah, if you have that's a, I was going to ask you that question yeah, because so, you, I, I remember you said something, but I didn't know the, the exact details. So if you have a three year 36,000, which is normal, uh, basic standard warranty for powertrain or bumper to bumper is three or 36 powertrain is usually more. Um, you can buy like, um, through your deal, not your dealership. You just go online and buy it through Ford or through Toyota or through a dealership on the East coast that might be offering it cheaper than a oh. dealer out here. Oh, and it, but it's still a Ford warranty. It's still a Toyota warranty. Um, oh. but if you have to do that before the bumper to bumpers up, once the bumper to bumpers up, then you buy a third party warranty. And then that, uh. that's, that, that's an, a whole different, uh, ball game. Mm. But like, um, I was like, well, this warranty that I want is like 1800 bucks. Cause I want it for the higher mileage, not the higher year. Cause I know I'm going to put more mileage on it than the, than the verse, the longevity of the years. Yeah. So I'm like, well, okay, this is 1800 bucks. I'm like, what is going to break that's covered under warranty? That's going to cost more than $1,800. The engine and transmission are covered longer than the, like, so I'm like, Hmm, I don't know. So it's just yeah. like, do your due diligence about the, even the warranties too. Cause like, like what's the catastrophic failure on your vehicle that's going to cost a lot of money electronic right. if your electronics are covered you know whatever but yeah no that's rad so now you drove the titan down there tell me this story because you guys <laughs> oh, yeah. i want to hear this <laughs> yeah so uh well angie got off work so angie works really close to the freeway and we live f five miles in from the freeway so she's like well meet me at the freeway we'll we'll leave the titan up here we'll take the camry down and that's what we did and we, we, we got wrapped up in the whole thing. And they were like, wait a minute. We still have to get the truck. What do we do? So we're like, okay, well, um, we'll, go, we'll go home. We'll drop off the Camry. Then we'll go back out to the freeway and pick up the truck. So now the question was, who's going to drive it home? So 13 years ago or 11 years ago, whatever, back in 13 when Andrew got the Camry. Cause, so the, how we got the Camry was we had a Scion. And that was the first car Angie ever bought was a yeah. Scion. And that was her car. It was her baby. And it, we wrecked it. We wrecked it up in Vegas, and then we had to buy a new car. So that was replacing her car, her first car. So that that has always been Angie's car. Yeah. And so when, it, when we went down and bought it, she drove it home. So we're sitting there, and we're getting closer to the end, and the question comes up, like, well, who's going to drive it home? I said, look, if we don't do this very often. Yeah. And you got to do yours way back when. Let me have this one. And yeah. And she's like, okay. So I so got to drive So you got to home. drive the Tundra home. But... <laughs> So I got to drive it home, but then when we went to go back to get the Titan, she's like, "Get the fuck out of here!" <laughs> <laughs> I had to go get the Titan. That, a very similar thing happened when we bought uh, Chelsea Civic. Is she mm -hmm. when we moved into this house, we tried to be very responsible and and bought an older Civic, mm -hmm. um, and we had it. I think that lasted uh, two months, maybe, and we're like, and Chelsea's finally. I like, remember that, yeah. yeah. And by older Civic, you meant like a '90s. Civic, or was the it the best, the better Civics, the late 90s? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I'm not. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. They are, the, like older, they are yeah. the better Civics. Because it's funny because the late 90s are like more older expensive than the early 2000s. Right. So, so we could have bought an, named... an early 2000s Civic, which was mm -hmm. probably a little more reliable, a little more tech, technology, but we're like, no, nah, we're buying a 98. 98 Civic. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. That's and, awesome. Uh, and she finally was like, nah, I need a new car. So we went down to the, the Honda dealer, and it was the same thing. We had to like, figure out who was going to drive the new civic mm -hmm. home and i drove the new civic home oh nice yeah <laughs> i think i did i think i did yeah i did yeah um, but yeah so that's pretty funny and then so now the next question is that you had is whose tundra is it right that's i think that's just a question like a like because every couple is different right you know what right. i mean like we have Chelsea's Civic is her Civic. It's obviously it's both of ours, you know, but mm -hmm. it's hers. And then I have I have the Maverick. And then like, I don't even know if she's ever driven the Maverick. No, really? Yeah. I think maybe she's backed it up one time and that was it. Mm -hmm. But like, um, but she drives the Titan and she's driven the OBS and stuff like that. But like, so the dynamic is very similar with you and Angie as far as work wise. Like we work mm -hmm. from home. Our wives have to drive for a job. So mm -hmm. Is she driving the Tundra to work and back? And are oh, are, that's well, what, like start, that was start like. With, the, oh, it, that was a question. So start with the with the ownership of it. Like it's ours. Yeah. It's we're we're both on the title. You know, we're both paying for it. Like it's our truck. So uh, then then who? So she drove it to work the first day, but ultimately, like she's probably just going to drive the 
the Camry to work yeah. every day. But so it, it so like and then so there's a lot of layers to this whole thing. So number one, you know, that was the thing. And like that, like when the the dude asked me, the finance guy asked me, it's like, oh, so whose is this? Whose truck is this now? And I immediately said, oh, it's ours. You know, because that's, that's how I am. I'm very I never say I too much. I always say. Well, and you also lot. just saying ours is better than saying Angie's. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But uh, I mean, she she is just as stoked about it. Like yeah. she is like, because Angie is a, a is a is a truck person. Like you know, we've been doing this a long time. She's just as into it, you know, as or not. She is just as into it as I am. You know, over these years, so she loves trucks and she loves vehicles and yeah, she's just totally in love with this thing. So um so yeah so when the finance guy he asked me I said it's ours um I don't know where I was going with that I guess the the next thing is is like. Because a lot of people, I, I put it on the internet, of course, you know, put it on, and then I, I wanted to put that picture of me and Angie at the dealership, mm-hmm. you know, either probably at the beginning when I said it was start talking about this. So, uh, put on that on the internet. Everybody was asked me like, well, the next question was like, well, what's happening with the Titan? I was like, well, what is happening with the Titan? Nothing's happening with the Titan. It's still sitting there. And then so, but I did ask myself. I said, so what do I do next with this thing? Do I? Because the license is coming up on it, you know, insurance, all that stuff, and. I, I, and I'm not saying that I'm doing any particular thing. These are all the things that are just running through my head yeah. right now. But I am leaning. But as of this morning, I'm leaning towards one more. And, and like one was like, well, it's just non off because eventually I'm going to give it to my kid. That'll be her first truck. I've said that before. And um, so but that's for a year. So I was like, well, I'll just non op it, you know, just save some money on registration and insurance and stuff like that. But this morning I'm sitting I went to the coffee shop, sitting in the coffee shop, staring at the truck, thinking about different things and traveling and stuff. I'm just going to keep going with the Titan until that thing, just something happens to it, you know, yeah. because why, why not? Like the, the, we, we've said this a lot too. And leading up to this point of getting to this truck is like the Titan is still a good truck. Like it is still yeah. a nice truck. After taking years all the way to the East coast, I realized that there's still a lot of life left in mind. Yeah. There's, it's not dead by any means, you know? So I think like next weekend we're going to, um, roll in the red rocks. Mm-hmm. Guess which truck I'm taking. Which one? The Titan, the Titan, <laughs> the Titan, man, the good old, <laughs> the good old Titan. It, it is funny when I, um, we very different situations, um, feelings wise, but like when I bought the Maverick, I bought it not for towing, not for, mm-hmm. not for anything else except just my get around town truck and, and stuff. And well, at first I was like, Oh, I'll take this on road trips. It's going to save me so much gas. And then we did that first road trip to North and Carolina, you're like, which was amazing. It was like, mm-hmm. we saved a lot of money in gas. The mm-hmm. truck did good. We were comfortable. It did everything that we needed it to do. Mm-hmm. And actually, it makes an amazing uh, truck to do rolling shots out of, too. Oh, so yeah. Like it Low. did. It clicked all the boxes. But then I got home and I'm like, there was no miles on this when I left. And now I have 5,000 miles on this. Yeah. If I do this twice a year, I'm like, nope, no more. Yeah. No I more. Know. It's like, I and I just like the tight. Yeah. So it's say, you know, maybe saved us five, six hundred dollars in gas or whatever it was. But like, no, I'll just throw them. I'm just gonna throw the miles on the Titan. And that's what I figure. Here's here's what I figure. Take my, my giving it to my kid out of the equation, which was one little funny thing. Is like when we got home and had to go back, she, my my kid looks out. She's like, "Where's my truck?" I was like, "Oh, it's at the freeway. We got to go get it." <laughs> so that was funny. But besides besides that fact, like the the Tundra is a good replacement for the Titan when the Titan cannot do it anymore. So take that Titan as far as it can go, and then, you know, maybe in it's it's only it only has two hundred eleven thousand miles on it. So if we were to say let, let's base it on exactly how many miles are on your truck, and how long it took me to put the miles on my truck, if we were to just use that as like some sort of like base point for something, I have another ten years of that Titan. Well, the thing is, is this is this is why I bought a Maverick versus another half ton, mm-hmm. because I was th- my thoughts were the same way, and I go there's that so a titan is rated our trucks are rated to tow 9500 pounds mm-hmm. i'm never going to tow anything close to that right so if i got like another half ton that say i think the tundra's tow 12,000 pounds or something like that 11,000 something yeah so like a thousand more pounds so mm-hmm. we'll say 2,000 pounds there's never going to be a point where i go well i really need to tow this 2,000 more pounds and and that's my point and that's why i'm saying that like it is a good replacement for when the time comes you know i think like we got we got it like i like i understand i got it now when i still have a lot of life left in the titan well that's the thing like i don't think i think your titan will last just as long as that tundra 
because now you're going to drive the Titan less. So you're not going to be. Oh, yeah. I thought about that. That's the thing, right? So now you're not going to be putting all these. You're going to put like, let's say you put 40,000 a year on the Titan before. Uh Now you're going to put like 20, maybe we'll say 20 and 20, right? So you're like splitting the difference. That's and that's uh, I forgot that part. That's exactly the the conclusion I came to this morning sitting in the coffee shop. I was like. Yes, I'm essentially spreading my miles over. I have a nice, this nice luxury truck, cruise around town, didn't put miles on, you know, taking on little trips here and there. But then I'm not doing that with my which, Titan, keeping less miles on my Titan. Yeah. And I'm going to bomb that thing across the country. Which, which this is why, yeah, that's exactly it. So, like, and so funny story is um, I took, I just dropped my Titan off at Arlo's yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we're putting about $2,000 worth of front suspension. And nice. everything on it. Yeah, we're replacing every the steering rack, uppers and lowers. Like, um, uh, it needs a new AC condenser. Well, we did, so did you? Did he diagnose? So it is a condenser That's that went said, bad. Yeah. Mm. I think it got. Well, the condenser would would get like a hole in it or something. So maybe oh. a rock came up and hit it like on the road trip. That could and and that's what you said because I I you know I didn't think about it until just now. But you're missing like the inner fender wells. No, I haven't. Or is it because of the body lift? Is because there's a big gap, isn't there? No, there's it's. I mean, there's not a gap or anything. It's just a something oh. that it's just something that can happen to anything. Oh, okay. Because the condenser is of... right there. No, it's just. I mean, go on a lot of road trips and you could pick up some. But it also could have went yeah. bad. I don't know if it what oh, happened. Yeah, to yeah, it. yeah. I, he, I have okay. no idea. He just mm-hmm. he just texted me and was just like, "This is what you need." So mm-hmm. I'm like, "Okay, we'll do yeah. replace it." I'm gonna do the same thing, man. I was thinking about it too. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna do the front suspension on the the Titan and fix the cats when it comes time and i yeah. think i'm gonna be a little less concerned with the this is gonna sound bad because i know how you are and i know how i am kind of um i'm not gonna be too concerned about the overall outside look like the paint is chipping off right now yeah and i before picking up the tundra i was like well i'm gonna repaint it but now i don't think i'll repaint it i'll just like keep it super mechanically yeah. sound you know well and it's and it looks good it's not like it's like rusting and in shambles yeah. it's just oh, an old truck yeah. that's like the the paint's like not perfect so like right it is what it is you know and and yeah. i that's what like why i painted my truck white and that's why i didn't spend a lot of money on the paint job it was just mm-hmm. like you know told danny just look this is make it look nice don't you know don't exert yourself you know on all this stuff like mm-hmm. but um because it just needs to do what it needs to do it needs to tow when i need it to tow but the, the my other dilemma is I already know what I what's going to happen to me. What? So I am like paying the Maverick off as fast as I can. Like yeah, and the, it'll probably be paid off. I don't, in about a year, year and a half. So like, mm-hmm. I'm like I know it's going to happen. There's two two scenarios here that I know myself. I'm going to say no. I'm going to keep the Titan. It's, it's the responsible thing to do. <laughs> but uh-huh. as the Maverick gets closer to the payoff point, gets closer to what the Titan is worth. Oh, uh huh. I could sell the Titan, pay the Maverick off, go finance a new truck. Yeah. But if I do that, I've told myself I will not buy a half ton truck. Oh, uh, you know, Oh yeah. We talked about this. Yeah. I'm right. going to get a three quarter mm-hmm. ton or a one ton truck because right, right. I'm not going to, if I, in my mind, it doesn't make sense for me to replace a fully capable half ton truck with a 60,000, $60,000 half ton truck. Like mm-hmm. that, my mind, that doesn't make any sense. If I'm going to spend 50 or 60 grand, it's going to be on a truck that's more capable than what I'm replacing. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. So like you could tow two cars, you could tow like a heavy camper, you could tow I mean, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You know, like, mm-hmm. so now instead of building uh, Tundras and 1500s and, and stuff, I've been building F250s nice. and I'll be doing that for the next year and a half every single yeah. night. Like <laughs> one of the options. Yeah. So. It's yeah, a, yeah. I already know myself, and that's how it's going to be. But maybe not. Maybe I will be responsible and just. I like how we've things. kind of broken the the titty pack, but we have not. Yeah, we're still ride or die with these titans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be funny when we show up next year on the other side of the country in my truck, and they're like, "Hey, what happened?" But like, hey, watch it. <laughs> yeah, calm down, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> Actually, we don't own a Tundra. It was a rental. It's just mm. all a lie. <laughs> You just went down to so Toyota fun. to take a picture in front of a random truck. I know, right? The, the salesman's like, what are you guys doing? It's like, don't worry about it. It's yeah. for a podcast. Calm down. <laughs> but yeah, so then the other thing is um, now that I've wrapped myself up in this, and this kind of leads us into the into our last weekend. Um, 
I don't have any aspirations to build a Tacoma right now. So if you see a Tacoma for sale, anybody sees a Tacoma for sale, don't tell, don't send it to me because I'm not interested in it. Were you? I don't think you were really ever serious about it, anyways. I don't think so either. <laughs> I don't think so either. Um, well, that, uh, there's two reasons for that. One, the cost. Two, um, your forerunner is just fine. And, and you realize us, that last like last week that leads us into the cruise of the pines cruise and yeah. that yeah I took the forerunner out there um, last week we were talking about uh, I, yeah last week we were talking about like is it going to make it what's going to happen because I was having the fuel pump issues well yeah. not I want to say fuel pump issues I've had fuel issues you know all this other stuff but it did killer like yeah. it did so good like it yeah. didn't let us down one time just cruise did the whole thing no problem and yeah it was great the newer Chevy truck actually was the problem ivan oh ivan yeah Ivan's trick overheated and then he almost took out ben then he almost took out our youtuber guy friend ben yeah jeez i walk so well i guess we'll jump all over this thing but yeah so we pull into the gas station because ivan's truck is getting warm and ivan's truck is a uh nbs body drop like an 05 nbs yeah yep by drop big wheels um yeah it's it's a nice it's a nice truck and they they came out from sencal and you met Mm -hmm. met up with them yeah. And you both. Okay, we'll start. From, we'll start, we'll from, start the from the beginning. We'll start from the beginning. Yeah. So yeah. So I load up the the forerunner on the trailer. Oh wait. Um, start from even before that. Yeah. Because you guys almost didn't come. Remember? Oh, because we were. Yeah, you were like this. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, because like I had Ivan. I don't know how we came to the thing, but Ivan's like, yeah, I'm gonna go. I said, okay, cool, I'm gonna go, man. And then so I'm starting to get my truck ready, having these little issues, and I'm like texting he texts me he's like hey what's you know how's it going i was like well it's going good i said i'm still ready to go but you know having this issue he's like okay well let me know so we get closer and then like the day before i'm like yeah I, well yeah i'm ready to go are you ready to go he's like yeah i'm ready to go and then when we met at your house we started talking we just we basically realized we were just like playing chicken who was going to not go first and the yeah. other person was totally not going to go <laughs> yeah. but we didn't we actually head on we both went yeah uh so yeah so uh ivan he lives in sen cal which is about three hours away from my house so it took him a three hour trek to get from there to here. And then we both rolled out, uh, out to you and got to you. Uh, what was that Friday evening sometime? Yeah. And, um, yeah, all that went real smooth. Everything was real nice. We unloaded the trucks. Uh, we got going the, the next morning. Um, we went to the meetup spot and then you went straight up to the show, Yep. which was cool. Um, because that, uh, cause like you, we were saying last week, there was, there was really no reason well, for you to. The, the reason for me to go up would have been to like get footage of people rolling up right for mm-hmm. for um, a video because it's called cruise to the pines. I'm going to make a video of it and I'm not going to have any cruising footage, but that's fine. I've never missed the cruise. I've always done the cruise. But what happens mm-hmm. is when you have a booth and you get to cruise to the pines, you get there at like anywhere from 1030 to 1130. Like mm-hmm. there just depends on what's going on on the drive up. Um Actually, you guys got there a little earlier this time because there's like that no mid stop at that gas station where that like well took, we did well, well yeah you yeah, guys did but like there was no right, like the group the spot where mm-hmm. it's like a that's like a forty five minute stop oh so. if everybody stops I remember that thing being packed yeah mm-hmm. so they don't do that anymore which takes some time off but I got up there um, I got the booth set up thanks to the body dropped clothing guys they helped me set the easy up up um and I was and then Oliver showed up he was number one. You know, he rolls in. Oh, he, he was the first one. He's the first one. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I know he like rolled up and parked in front of your booth. I did not know he was the very. Well, yeah, because they were like, there. yeah, we're not going to roll the cars in for like two hours. And he was like, OK, so he just like well, turned he, around and then he snuck into the he's like, I'm just going to park right here. Yeah, because he didn't. He was already up there. He was already up there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And then he helped me like set up and him and his neighbor. And then, um, yeah, it was just nice. It was just like there was no rush because when you get up there after doing the cruise for a booth, it's like set the booth up and you're We've all done that. Just yeah, and you're all yeah. like like it takes me a long time to set the booth up because I start like I'll set three shirts up, then I'll set hats up, then I'll set one more shirt up, then and I'll you're set like talking to and people I'm like and all over the place. Oh yeah, yeah, talking to people, mm-hmm. and um, but yeah, it was just relaxing. I That's didn't cool. get discombobulated as, a, as one would say until mm-hmm. you you and Ivan showed up. Yeah, you you did get a little. I didn't know I what to do. Tell. I didn't yeah, know I what always to do. Tell. And I just, I, when that happens, I just like, I'm just like, okay, well you just let me know what you want to do. Yeah. Cause the problem I'm, cause was like, I'm not going to suggest anything. You, you tell me what. You're well, and do. I was in the back of my head as someone that throws a show, they wanted a certain way. Yeah. Right. And so I, in my back of my head, I'm like, I know I want our show a certain way. And if someone mm-hmm. just comes in, like they're the running it, yeah. I'm going to get annoyed. And I know how Trevino is. Trevino will come over and he'll, yeah. Let me know and, that. Yeah. And, know, so. and we were. So what, what you're saying is because like we came in 
and we didn't roll up to the the uh, the registration. Yeah, we just kind of dipped in by the booth because yeah. we didn't know what was going on. But yeah, I wasn't like trying to be that guy. Oh no, no, like it was it was more of me. Like someone not, said, like, "Hey man, go park back there." Be like, "Okay," and then go yeah. move the truck. You know, it was more of me wanting because since there was only two club members there, I was like, "Let's just park him in front of the booth," because mm-hmm. then we hang out in front of the booth. And you guys get to see your cars right there instead of way in the back. Like, it's kind of weird. Yeah. But then Oliver pulled in front of the booth and I was like, well, I'm not going to tell Oliver to move his right. truck out of the booth. And, you so know, it's like, like the thing was, if we did, Ivan and I did park in front of your booth, it would obscure your booth because Ivan's got a big truck, you yeah. know. And so yeah. but like Oliver's truck, it looked I got a couple of photos of it. I don't know. Video. I don't know what I got, but it just looked good. Yeah. Oliver's truck, the booth behind it, the grinder TV, you yeah. know, easy up in the back. It all looked really good. So, no, yeah, we didn't want to mess that up. But yeah, everything worked out. No one told us to move. We kind of parked like a little bit in front yeah. of of the booth. Um, I want to go back to the cruise. Okay, okay. so that was your yeah, that was your experience of the cruise going yeah. that way. My experience was meeting at the meetup spot. Everybody hanging out, you know, doing a little footage, saying what's up to everybody. And I was thinking about how to approach this this week. The show was was great and perfect. Poise did such a killer job putting it together, and they always do. But I wanted to like kind of offer my perspective not negatively not very neutral i'm just going to mm-hmm. explain my situation and how i felt afterwards so you know going to the meetup spot was great say hey say what's up to everybody in the morning it was so killer but as soon as everybody decides to go it is not 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 chaos it is just if you don't basically if you don't say if you don't go with a group of people and you say hey guys we're gonna stick together we're, and, and the people did that like sunset did that i should have been more proactive in saying that, like, hey, guys, I'm going to cruise with you. Just wait, you know. But I didn't want to be like, oh, I'm the guy with the camera kind of thing, you know. So I just wanted to, like, find my way. So that's yeah. that's my excuse for why I didn't do that. So, but what happened was, by the time I got going, it was just me and Ivan. And then Ivan was, like, way behind me, you know. So I got, I, re- I didn't get any footage either of the cruising. Because yeah. it is a little difficult to to film that type of cruising. Yeah. Because the way that we go, it's a it's a two lane road, so you kind of like are in a straight line with everybody. You get stuck with the same people, and uh, yeah, it was it was difficult. So yeah, with it going through the cruise, and again, I'm sure other people really really enjoy the cruise. But from my perspective, I would almost much rather meet everybody at the show, and that's because you're coming from out of town. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, so that's a good point. That's people good point. that live in town. Um, cruise of the pines is a thing because it's like cruising from the desert up to the forest mm-hmm. and it's cause it's hot. It's, it's, it starts to heat up down here. Let's get out of the heat for a little bit and, and go up there. And I think it used to be in June when it was hotter and uh, now it's in May. I don't know. I can't remember. I've been going for a long time, but I don't remember. Yeah. But, I don't remember either. Um, yeah. If you're when the, usually perfect poise has one of their members leave first and everyone follows them. Mm hmm. But every it always gets broken up. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, that's um, the that's the term I was looking for. Broken up. It wasn't yeah. chaos. It was just very broken. It just up. gets broken that's, up because some people drive yeah. slow, some people drive fast, and that's happens. the nature of the cruise. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember when me and Milan took the hard body, and Ben um, with his Toyota and his buddy with his Nissan, they passed us, and and that Nissan was slow, and they were gone. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I, it was just me and him. Yeah, like, and, people, and we were him. we were just letting people pass us and just kind of doing this. The cruise part is more for, it's just, it's an enjoyable, you, it's for yourself instead of like anything else. Like That's what I realized. And I did enjoy that part. There is a part yeah. between um, leaving the meetup spot and getting to the, the, the Wickenburg area yeah. where it was, I was, Ivan was way ahead of me. I was by myself, but it was actually really calming to just yeah. be cruising windows down, you know, beautiful desert, yeah. kind of cool. So I do get that part. I yeah. totally get that part. Yeah, and I think there. I think more people. It seems to me that are actually are just going up for the actual show part versus both, right. because you've got people like Graham who came from the from the north from Utah. Oh yeah, he's not going to. And people down. from Vegas, they're not they're mm-hmm. not going down to do the cruise. They're just going to do the show. And right. And I think maybe it the park that they have it at now is so nice. Like before, they were kind of just have it. It was like in a parking lot of a of a college, and then a Buffalo yeah, the Wild aviation. Wing. Yeah. Yeah, and then. But now since it's at this park, like I want to be at that park all day and just hanging out, you know, that yes, because that because that was the cruise part. And then I will tell the funny story about the the Ivan thing. But getting there, it was so nice. It was breezy on this beautiful piece of grass. Yep. And then like later in the day, uh, Will producer Will came up to us and he's like, hey, did you guys 
you know, go take a little hike up there. It's really cool if you climb these rocks. And I was like, no, I didn't do that. But yeah, if you got there, early, I also asked Ivan when we got home, I was like, hey, did you walk down to the lake? What did you think? He goes, there was a lake there. Yeah, I know. I and I'm know. like, and so I'm like, I bet Frank didn't go down on the lake. I either. Know. Uh-uh. No, it's amazing. It looks like the moon. Oh, really? Yeah. There's See? It, it, it. There's it's only in that one spot it has these rock outcroppings. And this lake is like that. There is no other spots around that area like that. Like, so if you just Google, like, Watson Lake, Arizona, you'll see it looks crazy. Yeah, and, and you know, maybe getting there earlier in the day and chilling, like, yep. g- gives you a little more time to do that. Because, yeah. like you said, when you get there at 11, you know, especially from our point of view, you have the booth and I'm, you know, trying to film. Like, it, you do get a little wrapped up in what you're doing, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, so maybe uh, th- just maybe next time that's what I'll do to try that approach. And then, yeah. like, say, like, oh, you know what? Last year I said this and this year I did this and compare the two, you know. Yeah. So, like I said, it wasn't. I'm not speaking negatively of anything. It was just my experience and my yeah. my thoughts. It's definitely a different type of show, and you know, like, and they do such a good job, you know, with that with that event, with that park, and uh, their raffle, which I didn't win anything again. <laughs> oh, you didn't? <laughs> no, I know. Ne- I, um, I, yeah, I just never win anything at raffles. Mm-hmm. But me neither. Um, yeah, they, it's it's just a cool. It's just a good day. It was like the weather was perfect. Everyone was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so then back to the funny story. Oh, yeah, so, so Ivan, yeah. We're, we're cruising out there. Ivan texts me and he's like, hey, uh, or no, Katie texts me and she's like, hey, the, the truck's getting a little warm, but we turned on the heater and it seemed to balance itself out. And I said, well, we are about to climb some gnarly freaking grades, so we should pull over. And if you guys got to put water in it or whatever, and it's like, oh, that's a good idea. So we dip into the gas station and uh, uh, Ivan was a little ahead of me. So I get there, the hood's up and I see him with a towel, like trying to take this off. And I pull out the pocket and I start filming. And I'm like, Ugh. and then at the mo- I had heartburn at the time. So I'm like, I need Tums, you know, me and my heartburn. <laughs> so anyway, so I was like, uh, I said, I got to go. I said, look, hey, guys, if you do anything stupid, just wait till I get back. OK, just they, joking. They right? did not wait. Till <laughs> they they did back. not wait. I come back out and Ben is covered in antifreeze. And I'm like, what did you do? And apparently what happened was was it wasn't anybody's. Well, so I. <laughs> opened it up and he knew that it was pressurized so he's like let it sit for me he's like i'm just gonna let it sit it just exploded by itself like no one touched it it yeah. just exploded off. yeah got banned i was like damn you almost, you you could have you could have killed him like not killed him but you could have injured him you could have ruined gravely. that youtuber's face yeah and i know then, right? you know what i mean and then what's he gonna do yeah he's gonna then we're gonna see ben's burned face all the time <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. ivan because of ivan yeah uh, so yeah, so that was that was a little excitement, but that all got taken care of. We get back on the road. Um, the only issues that I ran into, the truck ran superb, like it ran yeah. great. I was actually really impressed with and it. And it started good every single time. Yeah, like yeah, start, never hesitated. Once I learned the kind of cycle the key thing and that, you know, like I, I had to time it with a compressor, so I have to like turn it on, and as soon as the compressor goes, turn it off. Yeah. So the the compressor anyway. Um, so anyway, so no, it did great. But the only two issues I ran into is, and I've had this problem before. And, um, if I think I mentioned it in the Chubbs video, I'm not sure, but the exhaust on that truck is really close to the bottom of the cab, Mm. like really close, like within under an inch. And, um, there, uh, there's carpet in it. So Alan, our good friend, Alan, you know, helped me out. And then when he painted it, he's like, I'm going to throw some carpet in here. So he threw some carpet, but it didn't have any, um, like dynamat. Yeah. And so with the exhaust so hot and it's it, it's fine when you're cruising because like it's got a nice airflow over it and it keeps it kind of coolish so it doesn't get too hot. But the second you start going slow, especially up hills, that floor starts getting super hot and the carpet starts to melt. And you're like driving and you're like start smelling burning carpet. So I'm like the whole time I'm like like you know how when people keep one hand on their Glock or whatever, I kept one hand on my fire extinguisher in case <laughs> things got rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one thing. Um, Oh, uh, uh, Whitby, Joy Whitby, uh, rolled up with me. So we're, we're cruising up there and then, um, we get up to up into Prescott almost to the, the thing. And I pull up to a stoplight and I hear like, Shh, and I'm like, Oh, what is that? I said, Oh no. Like it's got an airline, something, something's leaking. Maybe there's a hole in the tank or whatever. So I have two water traps on the back of that truck and one of them always comes loose. And what happened was it came loose and it just bounced right to where it hit the bottom and, and like pushed in the um the thing that you empty the water out of and it just started dumping air so it was a quick fix all i had to do is get it away but then the accuware started blinking so like the the controller started making all these things so i tell whitby i'm like 
I'm driving like, hey, Google that. What is that? What does that mean? So he's like Googling what's going on. And it, it's like, oh, hey, the, the, we're losing pressure is basically what yeah. it's telling you. So had to pull into a gas station, had to turn it off, clear the codes on the AccuWare, make sure everything was cool. And then that was it. And then yeah. we did the day. The day was great. The, like I said, the show was amazing. There's just so many killer vehicles out there. Like, yeah, it's insane. Like all of these shows, all these shows that we, we've been going to, like every one of them has just has killer rides in it. You yeah. Know? Yeah, and and uh, yeah, it was a good time. Oh, and then and you didn't even the best part. This is better than the tundra. What you got to film to whip check Wednesday. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's I fo- yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. So switch suspension. They do their their whip check Wednesday. Switch yeah. suspension. The sponsor of this podcast. Thank you very much. They do their uh, whip check Wednesdays where they just pick a vehicle and then they talk to the owner and and just kind of do a little segment on it. And yeah. Uh, Jay Cole came up to me. He's like, hey, you know, we were talking. I was like, yeah, I've actually brought my truck. He's like, oh, no way. He's like, let's do a whip check Wednesday. I'm like, yeah, I'm down. Yeah. So, yeah, we did that. that. Was it was so cool. super cool. I sent I, him I, a, I sent him some rolling footage of your truck for that. Oh, you did? The, yeah, not, then, not the, not the, other, not the, you kind of sold me out a little bit. I did. You but I didn't me. notice until after I posted it <laughs> I because I was, dr- I'm driving and we're, we left my house and I got some pocket footage of you and I have been driving out of the little community here. Mm-hmm. And then as we turned onto the parkway there. I got a little bit and then it was done. I was like, put the pocket away. And then I kind of rolled in behind you guys and we were driving. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to film a story on my Instagram. So I like got my phone out and I hit and I was recording and I was not paying attention to anything except me driving and also recording, but not really the screen. And then I uploaded it. Yeah. And then you uploaded me right in donk style. But, in the truck. but what we found out was, is that's just how you drive. All right. So that's the thing. <laughs> You've exposed me. We have exposed you. <laughs> you, uh, you know how many ex- messages I got was people <laughs> laughing. You know how many times I got roasted at the show? Oh, I bet. Well deserved. So, yeah. oh, 100 percent. No, yeah. yeah, I'm not saying it's not well deserved. 100 um, percent. Bacon hit me up and he goes, is Frank's truck? Is that number two or number three? I go, actually, I have no idea. Yeah, I was like, maybe he was just up high for like something. I don't know. That's so okay. I'm There's gonna, a forerunner trying to go back to its roots. It is. It is because I. You know what? Look. Okay. Look. 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 Number one, I haven't calibrated it in a long time, and I've like you know I've took it down to bio, and I think like uh, throughout all this time, like the settings got I don't know whatever. Because I did notice that even on this trip, I did notice like I felt like I was riding like stink bug, yeah. and I'm like. This feels weird. This doesn't feel right, but it's not too far off to how I, I usually drive. And that's just because I understand that the reason we build these trucks is to drive them low. But sometimes I just want to get up and get to where I'm going and not have to worry about crap. So I end up driving that high. But yes. Well, that's why you have AccuWare. That's why AccuWare was legitimately invented is because one is when you're trying to show off. Which it is, which right. when we're cruising out of two your, uh, is like house. two is like every, like that's when you're driving around town, and three that's is when you go on driveways, right? And that was so my, you need my, to yeah, but your two I just need is to lower my two a little bit, a little bit. Your two <laughs> was like your it's like when you're driving down your road at thirty miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, um, anyways, but yeah, I know it's funny. And then like, <laughs> I, I'm going to put, okay, fine. I got put on a little blast. I'm going to put uh producer will on a little blast, but right. it's, uh, but his little blast is kind of, it's kind of funny. Cause like the whole time, you know, uh, everybody's roasting me, sending me messages and, and we're sitting in the booth and Lindsay's there and you're, and we're all talking like, dude, when will finds out how you were driving, Brianne said that Brianne's oh, like, Brianne when will that, finds yeah, out, right. he's going to murder you. Yeah. He's going to, he's going to roast the shit out of yeah. you. And uh, so then I'm out filming and he walks up. He's like, hey, man. I was like, oh, here we go. And he's like, yeah. But he roasted me in the, in the nicest way I've ever in been. The most, in the most Will freeman way. In the most Will Freeman nicest way. And I was like, he could have been a little more mean to me. Yeah. Wait, don't worry. His sister makes up for that. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was that was hilarious, too. So I take it all in stride. I don't care. Yeah. I don't give a shit. But, and um, it was also good. Good times. Just. um one of my favorite parts of this now, and even Ivan said this is like we, when we got back to the house and we were just sitting there just chilling. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's great. I was thinking about that. Like, you were on the couch tired. Chelsea's falling asleep. We're all tired. It was eight o'clock. It was like, oh, it, was like no, it was like, no, it was like nine thirty because we got back at eight. So it was like nine thirty and we're just all like, um, we're tired. We used to go to Whiskey Row and stay up to like two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. 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 Man, we, 
how things have changed. How <laughs> how we have changed. Yeah. Because well, I couldn't yeah, even fathom going and staying out till two in the morning like that anymore. I could have done it, but I'm an idiot. You know. Yeah, but you would have been bad. No, but I was, I was been, pretty tired. Yeah, I was pretty yeah, tired. Yeah, because Sunday you were like up, ready to go. You had the truck loaded. You were strapping it down. You're like, all right, man, I'm out of here. Yeah. Imagine if you would have went out till two in the morning. That's true. You wouldn't have got yeah. home till the next night. Yeah, that's You'd true. Like, oh. Yeah, those are fun. Those are fun times though. Because like, I, 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 like waking up in the morning. Like even I was up. It was like six thirty in the morning, and I like, popped out of bed, and I'm like, this, this, I like this. Yeah, it is a nice feeling. Yeah, especially. But then I went uh, back to sleep to till like one in the afternoon. <laughs> After you left, everyone, everyone left. I like sat down in the chair and like woke up. I'm all, what t- what time is it? Yeah, I slept all day. That's funny. But no, um. Also, just having to travel so far for the show made it nice, you know, to to do it that way. Um, yeah, because like actually we we were we talked about it a little bit in person, but that was the first time I actually. No, that wasn't the first time. Just like one of many times when I went out with you and Rob, uh, yeah. we drove. We left SoCal. We got I got to Rob's house like three o'clock in the morning. And we mm-hmm. drove from SoCal out to Prescott. Did the show. I have video then, of you sleeping in, in Rob's car in the back. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, going well, up the hill. That? I don't know. I guess this had to have been like 10, 11. Yeah, something like that. Because it was before, before the forerunner. Before I wasn't even petitioning the club or anything. No. That was just Yeah, me it was out. a long time ago. But um, it had to have been 11 because I still, that, as earlier in the conversation I mentioned about the sign, I still had the sign on. So oh, and it, it had 11. to have been that because Rob's car was a 2010, which was my car for a little while. I oh, think that was, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I think it was 11. Yep. Yeah. Um, and this car was just lowered and stuff back then. It wasn't bagged or anything. Mm-hmm. But um, I was going to say, too, uh, that's a lot of driving, especially for Ivan and Katie and anyone from SendCal. Dude, they, they're, that's a 10-hour journey for them. Yeah, just to wake up in the morning and drive two hours and then drive two hours back home the same. like That Cruise of the Pines is a lot of driving if you do everything like we talked about. So what I was saying is next year, mm-hmm. if everything works out, um, we could look into getting like an Airbnb up in Prescott. That would be cool. You know, with you know, if there's five or six people that go, we can go up on either Friday morning or you know, get to my house Thursday. That would be cool. Friday yeah. morning, wake up Friday morning and just either or yeah, just drive up there. Yeah. You know, or that you guys really just cool. head straight to Prescott or however it works out. But mm-hmm. it seems to me like Cruise of the Pines needs to be longer. Maybe not necessarily the show, but like Spend Friday night in downtown Prescott. Like it's mm-hmm. super nice there. Like the town square. Oh yeah, like, it's cool. Like yeah, it's cr- definitely a cool place. So we could spend all Friday just hanging out there. Like that guy we we're talking about Maggie Valley. You know, like mm-hmm. hanging out there, and um, yeah, and then that, and then instead of like rushing to leave the show and drive two hours back to my house, you just drive mm-hmm. over to the cabin or over to the house. You you get everything loaded up, and then you go out to dinner. Yeah, and that type of stuff. That's probably the proper way to do it. It seems like as we get older, we're we're looking for more of. Whereas when we were younger, it was get off work, mob out to the show, do the show, get home, go to work. You know, yeah. like where now I think as we get older, maybe we're seeking more of getaways. Yeah, because like, like what's important to me now is obviously the show, but then hanging out after the show, mm-hmm. how we hung out here. But like go, imagine like going back to the Airbnb with pizza. Yeah, like that's my favorite part of LST yeah. is just like k- hanging out afterwards. Yeah. And just t- ev- talking about the experience of the day, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, we definitely got to plan that one out. Yeah. But yeah, that was a whole Cruise of the Pines experience. And then we cruised back down the, the short way. Uh, we did it. Yeah, it's about 200 mile round trip. Yeah. Um, ish, right? Yeah. yeah. The way home, the other way home is definitely. Oh, yeah, know, that was go- easy. It was, yeah, that was, it was way easy. Yeah, it was really just smooth. But yeah, that was that was the whole Cruise the Pines experience. It was fun. Thank you to Perfect Poise. Did a great job. I got mild food poisoning from that uh from that one truck for the hot dog. <laughs> well, that it could have been that or the beef jerky. We don't know. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the beef jerky. To be thing. fair, to be to fair. To be fair, the beef jerky was not technically beef jerky. It was cooked meat in a bag. It was just beef. It was just beef. <laughs> Beef in a it bag. Like, it was like fajita strips that you get those pre-done fajita strips. Yes. That's exactly what it was. Because it wasn't like jerky esque. Because jerky no. is like leathery and it's dry and it's just it. It was moist. <laughs> it was moist. <laughs> it was like fajita. It was like fajita chicken strips in 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 a in a bag in, in a vacuum sealed clear bag that was just hanging out in a tote all day long. Yeah. 
The hot dog was fine. Yeah. Sorry, hot dog guy. <laughs> <laughs> I also did not get any churro ice cream. That was directly behind oh, our booth. No, I, I messed up on that one, too. And I don't that, know why I didn't get it. And um, But, yeah. Oh, I released a new video. I Yeah, that's right. You did, you released your LST video. The LST video is done. Yeah. And um, now I have to do mine because that's like a, it's like our gauge of each other. Like, what's what's he working on? I got to get going on mine. Oh, he's done. Damn it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> we're all we're all we're kind of parallel there because. Yeah. Um, and then I have now I have two more, three more show videos to work on. And then I'm kind of done until I don't know when. Well, just like last year, I have LST forbidden mini nats. Oh, yeah. Forbidden. And, but I'm not doing that one. Chupas is. Oh, you spend the whole thing together. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. He hasn't done it yet. I don't know why. <laughs> and you're off to Dallas uh, tomorrow. Tonight. No, today. Tonight. Yo, Tonight. you're gone. Oh, yeah, you're out of here. Leave in a couple of hours, yep. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And I'm flying in. I land in Dallas at like 1045, pick up my rental car, drive to my hotel, which is right next to a Bucky's. So oh, at, nice. tonight I will be at a Bucky's. Oh, dude. Isn't that that's freaking awesome. cool? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So is there, is that the, the, show. the no, same speedway you went to last year? Same thing. Yeah. So okay. <clears throat> it's kind of sucks because um, I'm going by myself. Last year, I twice went with Chupas and one went with yeah, you. And we and just that's always a ton of fun. And we all had fun. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, and now uh, last weekend, um, the, the people that put on this show, C10 Nationals, put on an event called Bowtie Nationals in Bristol, which is only an hour and a half north of Maggie Valley. And uh, he was like, you know, come do that show. Come do this. And I was like, well. I don't want to be gone like Maggie Valley. And then what was after? Oh, then I went to Southern California for the diesel truck show. And then Mm -hmm. I would be gone to Bristol and then gone to Dallas and then gone to Utah. And I'm just like, um, so Chupas went to Bristol last weekend and did that. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be kind of like, I'll just be by myself. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be not an experience, but a different, different scenario. It will be. Yeah. We're all kind of used to hanging out and having fun and doing, getting, or, and uh, yeah, so I'll have no booth. Yeah. And no friends. Oh, no. <laughs> That's sad. I know. <laughs> but I'll Bucky's. Yeah. Hey, yeah. that, that makes up will, for it. We'll fix all of your problems. I'll come so back 100 good. pounds heavier because I had no self control. There's no one. There's no, no one to shame you. me. There's no one to shame me in the hotel room. <laughs> like, you just see. Oh, your third brisket sandwich, huh? <laughs> it's mm, well. three in the morning and the lady's like, welcome back. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> nice to Hi, see Brian. you again. <laughs> yeah, and I, I had third brisket sandwich at three in the morning. And then I come back at seven in the morning for brisket tacos. Yeah, dude, that's a, that's a, that sounds like the life. Yeah, let's. I treat it like a golden corral. I sit there at <laughs> for breakfast and then I wait for the transition. Yeah, that's yeah. hilarious. That's funny. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and then we're after that we're gearing up for um rolling the Red Rocks next weekend. We are. Yeah, and yeah, I will have be... the Maggie Valley T-shirt. Um, I'm shipping those after Red Rocks. So anyone that pre am I still those, picking those up? Yes, I got to figure okay. that out. All right, no problem. Yeah, um, no problem. You could take your Tundra down there. I know. Any excuse to drive right now. I'm actually thinking about going to get lunch after this. So. Oh, it's sitting outside. <laughs> oh, I got it today. Uh, yeah. Uh, you're surprised you're not podcasting out of it. And <laughs> 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 Welcome, everybody. <laughs> you know, you just like look at it every once in a while. You're just like. I, I, was, I sat in the coffee shop this morning for 30-ish minutes, and I just stared at it the whole, the whole and time. And you're like, we actually did it. Yeah, I was just looking at just looking at every little detail. Yeah, and it sounds insane, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah, no buyer's remorse, no weird feelings. Not yet. No, not yet. No, because I bought mine. Maverick was different. I ordered it and got it fourteen months later, so I had never physically saw it after I purchased it. But mm-hmm. I had huge buyer's remorse when I got it. Um, not for anything other than the fact that I felt like I didn't need it. Yeah. You know, like I was just like, oh, I have a car payment now. Like I haven't had a car payment in so long. Da, 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 da. But I think I think you've mentally pre- you guys have mentally prepared yourself for this because you knew it was going to happen. Yeah. I mean, it is the only sh- shocking thing now or thing that we think about is like we haven't had a car payment in 10 ish years. Yeah. So it that is the only thing. Maybe that's like, no. maybe that's what was different with me is because I hadn't had a car payment since 2005. Right. So it, it was almost. It was 18 years. Yeah. So maybe that it was, it was a shocking thing. I'm like, Oh shit. I have a car payment now. That's stupid. I I think that's in the back of my head. Kind of sitting there like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, But whatever. Yeah. Whatever. I got no choice now. I know. Right. (laughs) I was, Uh, that's the, that's the, if there was any weird thing that I thought about, 
and I, I, and I know it's very obvious, but it's just you think of these weird things. It's like they're like, yeah, yeah, here, just, here's this thing. Maybe pay us back. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just <laughs> it's, it's like with a house. It's like with a house. They're like, here's this thing. It costs almost a million dollars. Yeah. Pay us back in X amount of time. And you're like, but the thing with maybe? the house is they could just come take it. That's the true. thing with the truck is you could drive to the middle of nowhere. And, and it's just, yours forever. Like you just drive into the desert. Right. And then just and never, live in it. Yeah. And then move around and just be <laughs> you can't evade your house. That's a good idea. That's not yeah. bad. That's not bad at all. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, uh what else we got going? Cruise the uh, Oh, I have a couple things. Yeah, what I where's your mini truck and mag, Frank? Did you subscribe to it? It's coming. <laughs> Frank is a terrible mini trucker. Anyway, uh, so you got it. <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I did. It's really cool. Um, I subscribed to it. It's pretty cheap to subscribe. It's like twenty five bucks for the first three issues. They're going to do three issues a year or something like that. Twenty five dollars for three issues. That is, that's really cheap. That I mean, it's if you were to walk into a store and pay eight dollars for a magazine. I guess that's what they cost now. I don't know. I'm buying a magazine know, in a long time. Yeah, me neither. But like. You know, for an, for like a non corporate thing, it's not bad. Yeah, I would have figured those. I if I was to venture a guess with the way things are, I would. I I thought, you know, uh, they'd cost ten twelve bucks an issue now or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, and I yeah exactly. So but, three issues for twenty five bucks. That's a good deal. Yeah, it was very strange. Like I saw the cover. They announced the cover and stuff like that at uh, um, at, uh mini nats mini nats and stuff. So I wasn't mm-hmm. like surprised at anything at the, on that, but. Getting like when you op- open the mailbox and, and mm-hmm. get one and see this logo here. Yeah, that, that's going to be an interesting feeling. It was really weird. It was yeah. just like, wait, oh. Um, and that's yeah. the thing about that magazine. And OK, th- I think there are different layers to this. Yeah. And I guess we could do a whole episode on this and maybe we will later on or get into it now or whatever. But like as and I kind of I and I and I'm almost filled the two of these spaces yeah you have your your average dude like me who grew up reading that magazine every single month you know growing up in truck clubs it was always around it was always a thing but then you have this other sector people like yourself and a lot of people in our scene who work for the magazine did stuff you know, like either work for the magazine or contributed to the magazine or in some personal way had a very personal relationship with that magazine yeah which I kind of felt later on in my life, yeah. not, not early on. Yeah. So for you, it must be weird to have such a, 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 a um, an intimate connection with that magazine to now see it just appear, right? And I have and I have different opinions regarding the magazine, mm-hmm. not regarding anything what that what they're doing. You know what I mean? Well, I guess I do, um, but like my connection to the magazine was I always loved reading like the editorials, yeah, and and all that stuff, and it's like. And they have editorials in here. Um, so um, it's uh, the editor, um, Logan, Logan Wade. And mm-hmm. then ODB has one in here. And um, yeah, it's it's really well put together. So I'm really curious to see. I'm, I'm more, I'm excited, but I'm actually more curious. Because knowing how, what it takes to have a print magazine. Mm-hmm. And like, it's it's not easy. You know, and, oh, yeah. and and it was easier for me back in 2005 because print magazines was still a thing. It was still a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, MySpace was just become like just a thing. So it was like mm-hmm. you, the excitement level of a magazine was different. Now, I'm really curious to see if it's an excitement thing or a nostalgia thing. That's a good point. So your the approach that they have to have with this it can't rely on the old mini truck and magazine approach. Right. Like they have to figure out ways to um, excite people because mm-hmm. like they have show coverage in here. They have LST in here, right? I turn to LST and there's nothing that I didn't already see right on social media. So how do you make show coverage exciting in a magazine? And then how do you like, like combine it with social media? Cause before the, the later years of mini truck and they had a website and stuff, Mm -hmm. but like how do you combine print and social media to make it vibe together to where it keeps the, the people wanting the reason to buy a magazine, Mm -hmm. not just a nostalgic reason. Yeah. Cause uh, how, like how long is that nostalgia going to last? Cause if they plan on doing this, like having subscription coming out with content all the time or more content, cause they're doing three the first year. So they're going to do six the next year. Like there's plenty of trucks out there. That's not the problem. 
you know, like, and, um, I think the, the problem is keeping people excited about it. Right. To the point where they they want to spend money on it. And the excitement may lie, lie, not necessarily because the show, yeah, the show coverage is like the, the digital space is the new show coverage to see who was there and what was there. Yeah. You know, maybe now this will fill a space of like really heavy on the features because that was the thing someone asked me uh, oh i think uh, yeah i think it was whitby asked me he's like you know are you like excited to possibly see this thing like in mini trucking or something and i was like i haven't really thought of that in a long long time you know but yeah that would be super cool so like maybe that's where the space that lives is like all of these people are building these trucks to aspire to to be in in that magazine, you know, there, yeah, there's um, truck hub is a, is a great example that I always give people and CK magazine's really good about this too, because those are two magazines that didn't start in stores. CK is in bookstores and I think some grocery, but not a ton. Cause there's, there's very, there's levels to this. It's not easy just to get your magazine into grocery stores, right? It's easier to get it into bookstores than it is into grocery stores. It's too, oh. it's, it's, it's definitely, it's a different thing. Um, but like, Truck Hub, it's like a t- coffee table book every month, and there ir- there are ads in it, but the ads are very, they f- they they work fluidly with everything. So the placement mm-hmm. of the ads, the, the the design of the ads, like all that and and all that. So yeah, it'll be it'll be really interesting to see where it goes. Right. You know? Um. The the one thing that I do hope they figure out is like, I mean, I'll be perfectly honest. Like you have Tuck Lugs in here as a feature. That's an old build. You know what what's, I mean? I, what's that one? I don't know what that one That's is. That's uh, this one. It's one of my f- favorite trucks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. oh yeah. Wasn't that yeah. the first truck that Gendro bagged? Or no, no, that's a different truck. Yeah, it's a different truck. But he did do this one. Mm-hmm. So, like, so this truck is amazing and all that stuff, right? But, like, um, and this S10 on the cover is super sick. But, like, the balance of, like, nost- again, nostalgia mm-hmm. and new. There's an entire new mini truck scene, yeah, in the Los the the Los Angeles area, the yeah. mi, like mini, mini truck revival, and it would be nice to see them reach out to Vic, and put that in this magazine because mini truck and magazine back in the day it was showing you what was happening now, right? It wasn't showing you what was happening 20 years ago, so this needs to show people what is happening now, as well as the nostalgic form of it. So yeah, again more curiosity than anything else, but yeah, I, I no, think those are excellent points. Yeah. I think they're going to do really good. Um, once they kind of find, find their, their level. Yeah. Find, figure it all out. Cause the quality is mm-hmm. really good. The photos really good. Um, the trucks are super cool, you know, and there's also a balance like this is not, this is something that a lot of people don't talk about either. There's a balance of, um, super duper crazy trucks like Oliver's the stranger, Zach's and then um, the more accessible trucks, like the more relatable trucks to us, like Mm -hmm. your forerunner, for example, you know what I mean? Like your, or my Tacoma, like they're not crazy trucks, right? You know, so the, there's always that balance of like putting the, the, the uh, relatable trucks and the blow your mind trucks. Cause if you just do all blow your mind trucks, the guys that it's just like, no, they want to see something. It seems like, yeah, it doesn't seem relatable. Kind yeah, of thing. And that, they they mm-hmm. did a good balance of that in this issue too. So yeah, well, I'm excited to get it and check it out, and then uh, maybe, yeah, we'll, we'll maybe we'll discuss go into a little more discussion next week because yeah, we have to just come up with one more episode before <laughs> rolling in the Red Rocks. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We do. Yeah, yeah. If anyone has any questions, send us questions. We love questions. Yeah, we love questions. We got some questions, but we'll get into those next time. Um, but let me, let me think about this. Uh, the, I think the mini truck and new mini truck magazine is a great topic. Let me put some more thought into it Yeah, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get a little more deeper dive into it next week. Yeah. And we're also, if we have questions, me and you, mm-hmm. we could think of those and send them over to them to and maybe, Logan and yeah. yeah. And, and get some, uh, and get some answers, maybe like their future and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, there we go. And then uh, he's from the East coast, right? Yeah, Midwest, I think. Midwest, we got to. He's we, been we around see, for a long time. You know what I mean, yeah. like photography yeah, yeah. wise and stuff. So like, yeah, because he's a uh, what's the name? Oh, Logan, Logan Wade. Lo, Logan Wade photography. Yep. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He he definitely. We got to get him on the list of when we do our little tour thing. You know, figuring that out, getting him yeah. sit down with him and talk to him. That'd be great. 
Yep. And then I have Tacoma updates, but I'll leave those for next week. Nice. Oh, I can't wait. And then I have a super duper secret squirrel project that not even you know about. (laughs) You're hiding things from me now? (laughs) I know. (laughs) I am. Because I don't know exactly what's going to happen. So I'm not saying anything. I've... I. Used to get ahead of myself and just say something, and then I, yeah. I would like stop and think about like, well, actually, that actually might not happen. So, mm-hmm. um, well, yeah. I can't wait. I actually, that's great. I love it. <laughs> so no, it's great. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. I'll have the new shirt, the Sixth Street Taco shirt, this weekend at Rolling in the Red Rocks. Yep. So if you're going to show, cruise by, um, pick that up. That's new. I have banners. I made some banners that are available uh, this weekend. Uh, all, all, all on the website, of course. Go on the website, pick those. Yeah. Up. Doing big things over here. Try, well, trying. <laughs> Definitely trying. Uh, buying big trucks, making big banners, doing big things. Yeah, that should be a t-shirt. No. <laughs> anyway, that's it. That's all you got? I think, I think that's it. I'm trying. Right, cool. Yeah, those are my notes. I had, oh, Utah. Yeah, Mini Truck and Mag, Cruise of the Pines, LST, Tundra Talk. Um, rest in peace, Titan, but not really. Not really. No, the, no, the, the Titan will live forever. The Titan lives on. When that you sent me that video of that Titan or uh, Tundra, you know who sent apart. me that? Who sent that to you? Ben. Oh, he did. He goes, I don't know Frank well enough to send this to him, but it's pretty oh, funny. I was like, Well, ben, I do. You can send it to me because that's <laughs> it was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. You sent me this video of this Tundra completely blown apart. So when that, yeah, when the Tundra's like that, the, I'll be driving the Titan around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because they had to replace the block or something like that. Something it was like just that. amazing to see. I mean, Jacob's a Toyota mechanic. He works at mm-hmm. Toyota. Um, I think those like the first year there was a couple little small things that they were having issues with, but it, that was crazy to see. Yeah. Well, it it's was, shot. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's with any truck with the Fords. You got to take the, the body off the frame to, yeah. to do that. So, I mean, that's just, that's so, not my problem. That's a dealership problem. Exactly. That's <laughs> what the best thing about new trucks. Yeah. That's like the Maverick. There's something wrong with it. I'm like, ship that thing uh, back to the dealer. Yep. Yep. Give exactly. me a, give me a rental car. Yep. Well, cool. All right, then. Well, we'll, I guess we'll see everybody next week. Bye. Bye.